Hello and welcome fellow coders! Thanks for joining me today to my second part of my Testify tutorial series. In case you haven't watched the first part, I will be using the same example as well as some code pieces, so definitely make sure to check it out first. Today I am going to explain testing suites. But what exactly are testing suites and what are they used for? Let me try to explain it by giving an example. Suppose you have written an auth service and all your test cases reside in a designated file. Let's further assume that you have written unit test cases as well as integration test cases. And they are all written in one big 2000 line file. I know that these function names wouldn't work in the same package and neither in the same file. But for simplicity's sake, let's just go with it. Having a huge file like that is hard to maintain, so the natural urge is to clean it up. The first thing that comes to mind is to split the unit tests from the integration tests. Now imagine that you would be able to take all the unit tests and put them into one group and then take all the integration tests and put them into a separate group. That is basically what testing suites are, a group of tests that belong together. So what you end up with is a unit test suite and an in test suite. This example is super obvious I know, so let me give you another one. Imagine you would get rid of all your integration tests or let's just say you didn't have any in the first place. Even if you have only one type of tests, you still might consider grouping the test cases. One idea could be to move all test cases that test any errors into one separate group. This way you end up with a non-error test in one group and the error tests in a second. These could be your happy path suite and your error suite. You could argue that this is a bit overkill and you are not completely wrong. But let me try to convince you why it still would make sense to use testing suites. I think you would agree with me in the point that the way you would set up the happy path suite would greatly differ from the way you would set up the error suite. That is because the prerequisites are completely different. On the one hand you need to set up all your test cases so that everything runs smoothly. On the other hand you need to set up all your test cases in a way that they return errors. But the way you would set up all your test cases within the happy path suite would probably be very similar, right? And the same goes for the setup for the error suite test cases. Now let me come to the point why I think that using test suites might make sense. And the way I talked about the setup of the test cases might have already given you a hunch. Let me introduce to you the best feature of the suite package of Testify. And that is testing suite life cycles. I have to admit that the word lifecycle does not come up in the documentation of Testify. But it still helped me in a great way to remember all the functionality. Every single testing suite has a few life cycles that get executed every single time a test suite gets run. And the good thing is that you can kind of, let's say, hook into these life cycles and then run your own code. I'm not going to explain every single life cycle right now, because I'm going to show you all of them in the code. So enough with the crazy words and let's hop right into the code editor. Let's start by going through a very simple example. For that I'm going to create a new file in the root directory and call it example suite underscore test. I will use that file to explain to you how you can create a test suite as well as go over all the life cycles. Later on we will go over the real world example. In order to create a test suite we first need to create a struct. This struct will act as our test suite and we will use it to call functions upon it, like for instance to run the test suite or to call the lifecycle functions. But first we need to make sure that the test runner treats our struct as a test suite. And we can do that by using the composition pattern and embedding the suite struct of Testify's suite package. That's basically all you need to do. Awesome, right? Now that we have our test suite in place, the next step is to tell the test runner to execute our test suite when we run the go test command. This step is pretty straightforward since it works the same way as writing a regular test. You write a function prefixing the name with test and passing in the t argument of the testing package. The next step is to call the run function of the suite package. You can see right here that the first argument you need to pass is t. And the second argument we need to provide is a testing suite. So we can use an instance of our example suite. Awesome, that's all we need to do in order to run our test suite. But since we don't have any tests, let's add one so that the test runner has something to work with. Adding tests to our suite is pretty straightforward. Since testing suites are defined as structs, tests are defined as member functions of these structs. And same as for regular test functions, the name must also start with test. But in contrast to regular test functions, they do not need the t argument of the testing package, since it's already embedded in the test suite. We can now use the method receiver to do all our assertions for us. You can see that it has the exact same functions as the assert package of testify. If you want to learn more about how assertions work in Testify, make sure to check out the first video of this series. So for our example let's go with the simplest test case and check if true is true. 
If we run this test case, we expect it to of course pass. Let's add dash v for verbose mode so we can better see what's happening. Indeed, test true was executed in our test suite and it has passed. Just for the giggles, let us now rename the test and see what happens. Let's call it run true or whatever. Since I already told you that the member functions should also start with test, we can expect that no tests are executed if you run the test suite. And that is exactly what the test runner tells us. So let's quickly revert that so that our test case gets executed again. One last thing I would like to show you is that if your test cases will fail, you will get the exact same output that the assert package would provide. Even if you remove the dash v flag, you will still get a pretty detailed output of what exactly has failed. This is because the test suite uses the assert package of testify internally. Again, if you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out my first video. For now, let's make sure that our test case passes again and we can now start talking about testing life cycles. As I've already told you, testing life cycles are specific commands that get executed at specific times during a test run. If you have a look at the documentation of the suite package, you can see that the life cycles are defined as specific types. For instance, you have the after test type, the before test type, as well as the setup all suite type. In Testify, all these life cycles are specified as interfaces providing one simple function. Like for example the setup all suite type. It is defined as an interface providing the setup suite function. This will be run before all tests in the test suite. So if you have something in your test that needs to be executed before everything else, like for instance connect to a database, you can implement the setup suite function and put your database connection code into it. I will now go over every single of these life cycles so you get a better understanding of how they work and how to use them. In order to implement a life cycle, all you need to do is to write the function specified by the interface as a member function of your testing suite. Let's take the example from a few moments ago and implement the setup suite function. That is basically everything you need to do in order to hook into a specific life cycle. So if you have any code that needs to be executed before every single test, you can now put it in this function body. In this example, I will keep it simple and just print out the function name. To do that, in regular test functions, I would use the log function of the t parameter. Lucky for us, we provide a t as an argument to the run function right here. So to access it, we can use the t function of our suite. This returns the t instance which we can use to lock the function name. To explain the other lifecycle functions, let me quickly copy and paste this function a few times. And let me scroll down a bit so you can see more of the code. To complement the setup suite function, which gets executed before every single test run in the test suite, we also have the teardown suite function. This gets executed after every single run in the test suite. This can be useful for instance to close the connection to the database after all your test cases have been run. But again, for now I will just print out the name of the function. And of course, we also have life cycles that get executed before and after every single test. For instance, the setup test life cycle will be executed before every single test case. And to no surprise, there is also the teardown test life cycle which gets executed after every single test case. These functions are particularly useful to prepare your test cases or clean up afterwards. For instance, you can use the setup test function to seed your database with test data and the teardown test function to delete all data afterwards. This way you can make sure that every single test case gets a fresh set of test data. Even though this works for most cases, there are sometimes scenarios where you need specific requirements for your tests. Like for instance, if you have test cases where your database needs to be empty. If you would use the setup test function, you wouldn't have any chance to find out which test case is currently running. The good thing is though, this is such a common use case that Testify provides us with lifecycle functions that we can use in order to accomplish that. We can use the before test function which takes two arguments, the suit name as well as the test name. This way, we can find out which test case is currently running and act accordingly. And of course, there's also the after test function which has the same argument list. You can use the after test function instead of the teardown test function if you want to clean up your test cases under specific conditions. For instance, you have a database containing two users and a test case adds another user. After the test case, you might want to delete the specific user while leaving the rest of the database intact. This is a prime example where after test might be useful. Now let's add some logs to the test case as well, so we can see when it exactly gets executed between all these life cycles. And let's add a second test case so we can see which life cycles get executed between tests and which life cycle gets executed before all and after all tests. Now let's bring up the terminal and finally run our test suite. Since we locked out the name of every single test function, we can now see the order in which every single test function as well as the life cycles get executed. 
First, we see that the setup suite gets executed. Right afterwards, we can see that the first test case gets executed. In our case, it's the test false test case. Next, the setup test function gets called, followed by the before test function. After all the setup has been done, it's finally time to execute the test function itself. The cleanup phase starts by calling the after test function, followed by calling the teardown test function. Now the second test case gets executed and the whole cycle of test setup, test execution and test cleanup begins again. And after running every single test case, the test suite gets torn down using the teardown suite function. And that is basically it for life cycles of test suites. Let us now take what we learned and apply it to a real world example. I'm going to take this ugly abomination of test case from my last video and turn it into a test suite. If you haven't watched my last video, make sure to check it out so you can fully understand what I'm talking about. But first things first, let's get rid of this example suite file and open up the price increase test file from my last video. As a regular watcher of my content, I'm sure you still have every single word in mind that I said last time. But in case you forgot one or two words, here's a quick recap. I have talked about this test calculate function right here. It reads data from a database, does some calculations and asserts the output and in the end tears down the database. I'm sure you can agree with me when I say that we can divide this test case into three parts. First the setup part, second the actual testing part and lastly the cleanup part. And if this does not scream life cycles right into your face, I don't know what else does. Let's start by defining the test suite. Since we are connecting to a real database, I'm going to treat my test suite as an integration test suite. So I'm going to call it in test suite. As we learned before, our testing suite needs to embed the suite struct of the suite package. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that our test suite gets executed when you run go test. So we write a regular test and call the run function from the suite package, passing in TN our test suite. Since every single one of our test cases will be using data from the database, we can connect to the database within the setup suite function. This is the lifecycle function to set up the test suite and thus gets executed before every single test case, which makes it the perfect place to put in the setup of the database connection. We can get rid of this line because we can directly use the assertions of our testing suite. Oh, I just saw that I still have a panic in my test case. That is actually a very bad practice. So let's replace it with the fail now function of our testing suite. We can provide an error message that gets printed out if we actually run into this case. So instead of panicking, the fail now function will stop the test suite immediately from running any further. But in contrast to the panic function where everything gets thrown overboard, the test suite would be shut down more gracefully. Now let's take care of the setup database function. Of course we can simply get the T parameter out of the test suite, but I want to show you something. So let's replace T with ITS. So within the setup database function we first need to change the signature. Or in particular, replace the testing parameter with the in test suite. Now what's left to do is to go over the whole function and replace everything where T was involved previously. The first line is pretty straightforward, just get the testing parameter out of the testing suite. The if statements are actually the more interesting part, and that's because of the teardown database calls. We will be tearing down the database in a teardown suite lifecycle, so there's no need to call it here, which is why we can delete this line. And instead of logging and failing in two lines, we can now use the power of testify and replace these with the fail now function. We also can get rid of the string formatting, since the fail now function will take care of that. Now we can get rid of the second fail now function, since it's obsolete. As for the second if statement, it's pretty straightforward, since we do the same thing we did in the first one. Now let's go back up and do the same thing for the C test table function. First instead of T, let's pass in ITS. Changing the function itself again is pretty easy. First change the signature, second the lock, and lastly get rid of these two lines and replace this line with the fail now function. Ok, now let's scroll back up to the setup suite function and I'm going to show you another cool thing about testify. Since our testing suite is a simple struct, we can use it to store additional fields in it. Like for instance the database connection db as well as the calculator. Now all that's left to do is to put the fields into the in test suite and then we are done with the setup part. So let's add db for the database connection and calculator for the price increase calculator interface. Since we are done with the setup of the test suite, let's deal with the cleanup phase of the suite next. We will remove the teardown database function called from our test case and move it into the teardown suite lifecycle, which gets executed after all test cases have been run. Let's start by defining the teardown suite function and then paste the teardown database call into it. 
Since T as well as DB are now fields of our testing suite, we can now replace both arguments and simply pass in ITS. Since changing the signature as well as cleaning up this function works the same way as before, I'm going to use the almighty power of video editing to fast forward a bit, so you don't get bored and fall asleep. Since the setup suite function sets up a database and the teardown suite function ultimately drops it, I need a way to guarantee that every single test function call starts with a fresh set of test data. That is why I'm preparing this clean table function right here. It is going to clean every single entry in the database. And as you might already guessed, I'm going to put this function into the lifecycle that gets executed after every single test case. Hence, the teardown test function. So simply call the clean table function right here and we are good to go. Now the only thing that's left is fixing the test case itself. So let's remove the testing parameter, make the test calculate function a member function of our testing suite, use the calculator from our calculator field and as the last part replace all the assertions. Ok my fellow coders, look what we have done. We have taken this bloated and ugly test case and transformed it into this super awesome testing suite. And look how beautiful and clean this test case looks like. Awesome right? The only thing that's left to do is to execute the go test command and see if the test case is still working. Well, this looks good to me. Ok, even though that is basically it for our transformation, there is still one cool thing that I would like to show you in action. And for that, I'm going to need a second test case. But first, let me explain what this test case will check. If we go into the price increase function, you can see right here that an error gets returned in case we have less than two data points. So let us write a test that ensures that this is working. To start off with our second test case, let's do what programmers do best and simply copy paste existing code. Now let's rename our test case and then we can point our attention to the assertions. In this test case, the error message should be equal to not enough data and the actual price increase should be equal to zero. That is it for our test case, but if we would run it, it would fail. This is because of the ctestTable function in the setup suite lifecycle. Since this function always puts the exact same two data points into the database, we cannot use it for our second test case. That is because the price increase function will only return an error in case we have less than two data points. So let's cut this function out and put it into a different life cycle. The first one that comes to mind is the setup test life cycle. That is because it gets executed before every single test case. That is what we want, sure, but it still leaves us with the problem that we wouldn't be able to tell which test case is currently running. And thus, we wouldn't be able to tell when we need to seed our test table and when we should leave it empty. So unfortunately, we cannot use the setup test function. But as I told you earlier, we can use the before test function since it gives us access to the test name. For simplicity's sake, let me just use the db field of our testing suite and not rewrite the seed test table function again. What we can do now is use the test name parameter and check if it's equal to test calculate underscore error. If that's the case, we can simply return and stop the function from seeding the test table. This is a super simple example of how you can prepare your test suite for every single test case. Usually this part is a lot more complex, but now you have everything you need to know in order to prepare your test suites for your test cases. Let us now fire up the terminal one last time and have a look at the output of our test run. We can immediately see that for the test calculate function, the table got seeded. Whereas for our second test case, we can see that the database only got cleaned, but actually not seeded. So to no surprise, our test suite indeed does work. Oh, before I forget, there's one final thing that I want to show you. And I promise I will wrap up the video afterwards. Remember when I showed you the difference between assert and require? Of course you can use require in suites as well. Simply use the require function of your testing suite and you will have access to the require context. Afterwards, you can call all the assertions that you want. Business as usual. As promised, I'm finally wrapping up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me transform this super ugly test case into this super awesome testing suite. If you want to see the last part where I'm going to talk about mocking, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, you will only see a black screen. And I wouldn't mind if you show me some love by hitting the like button and writing go test if I go into the comments. And until next time, keep on coding.